I live in Cote d'Ivoire, and Cote d'Ivoire has had great um, political crisis. We have used the internet before, during, and after election and crisis. How did we use it before the election process itself? We were looking at, we, we used the internet to mobilize people, go and get registered, go and collect your cards. This is how you vote. This is how you report elections. So we use it for education, for mobilization, and for civic engagement. Mm -hmm. Now, after the elections, during the process of the election itself, we use it for monitoring, for reporting, for information sharing. Now, after the election, there was crisis. We used the internet for humanitarian purposes because we were calling people. Uh, we wanted to know who has a problem with health, which doctor can take care of you. And there was this wonderful lady whose pregnancy had come to term and there were no cars to take her. We called a doctor who was willing to remain on the phone mm -hmm. while we speak with the woman's husband. So doctor is on, on, on conference call with the, hus the husband and the husband is helping the wife mm -hmm. to push. And when the baby comes out, the doctor explains all you need to cut the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. So we had about three, four babies. Internet enabled delivery in Cote d'Ivoire. We had a lot of things that doctors and uh, uh, people who remained online to keep with, mm -hmm. to keep with families. And of course, um, helping Red Cross get to sick people, um, giving people information on what, how do you, uh, we call it a practical advice on how mm -hmm. to cover yourself in case of this. So the internet has been great to us. And one thing that is good with the internet is that it doesn't matter where you are. So you could be in France and keep up uh, because in Cote d'Ivoire, at the height of the crisis, we had a BlackBerry Messenger group online. We had a Skype group keeping uh, permanently on. We had the Twitter group permanently on. We had Facebook groups permanently on. So when there is a problem, we just circulate the message and then we see how we can get help. So we have hashtags like CIV2010 to, to where people share information. We have CIV social. That is the one we use for humanitarian purposes. We have CIV Next. That is the one we created after the election crisis has ended. And the question is, what next? And, and you would say that all these things really made a difference for the They made a difference? How do I know they made a difference? Because the Prime Minister has come on Twitter. And all the ministers are there. And they're informing us. And now they come in the evenings. And they're like, they're reporting to citizens online. Mm -hmm. And we're asking them questions. And we're telling them, this thing you said, we didn't like it. You need to change. And in Cote d'Ivoire specifically, they asked us who should be in the National Reconciliation Committee. Mm -hmm. And we told them, uh, we need people who are experienced. Yes. We also need uh, political leaders. Yes. We also need religious leaders. Yes. But we also need youth icons like Didier Drogba. And today, the footballer, he's on the National Reconciliation Committee. So we feel that we have brought something to governance, mm -hmm. to democracy, and we're happy. And we told our president, we want you to be stylish. We want yeah. you to use an iPad. And so he put an iPad for all the, gov all the ministers. So we're happy. We think that the internet generation is changing government one step at a time. And I hope that will happen more. I think uh, Finland is a great country, and you have a great education system. But there is still something more to do. Use the internet more, make it available, and encourage young people everywhere. Let it be a tool between the government and the people. Mm. Yes.